All right, the first piece of gear we're gonna take a look at today is the Airy LED Fresnel kit. So these originally were tungsten lights that we had bought aftermarket LED bulbs to replace the original tungsten bulbs. So in the kit, we have two 650 and two 300 uh, heads and four kit stands and barn doors. So the, it's a complete kit with two lights that would have been the equivalent of two 650 watt tungsten lights and two 300 watt tungsten lights. But because they're using LED bulbs, they're at a much lower wattage. We can plug a lot more into uh, one particular circuit using our electricity formula. The uh, 650s are just under 100 watts, I believe, and the 300s would be obviously half that. So it's a great kit. Each one of these fixtures is a Fresnel lens light, and um, let's take a look at that. So behind this piece of foam here, I have some barn doors in two different sizes, obviously. So the 650 is larger than the 300s. So to set up a light, I'm gonna grab a stand, barn doors, and a 650. Remember how they were packed up in the case? It's a good idea uh, so that you can remember how to put it away later. So I've set up my kit stand and I'm gonna put the head on there. The airy lights have two different ways to put it on the on the head here. I could put it at an angle, maybe better for hanging from a ceiling or something like that, or if I needed a really downward facing angle uh, from this stand. Or typically I would put it on the stand that way and tighten onto there. I wanna make sure that's uh, fixed on there nicely. If I need to, I'm gonna spin this around. I see that I have my cable uh, dressed and set on this cord, this uh, rope. Um, to take the stress or slack off of the line so that it's not pulling on this part here. Even after we plug the light in, we're still gonna give it um, some slack there so that we don't um, put too much stress on the cable. Uh, next up, I'm gonna grab that barn doors. So the barn doors fit onto the, onto the airy light uh, with these retaining clips right here. At the top, you'll find there's a spring-loaded. Sometimes, you know, these might be really uh, really tough or they might have a different mechanism but in this case it's simply a spring-loaded mount. I'm going to slide those into the ears and lock that into place. Um, a lot of folks you might find in the industry have removed these because they want to have the speed of being able to take these on and off or put in scrims um, but in our case it's a nice safety feature in case the lights upside down or you know uh, moved in a way that might fall off easily. Uh, so there we go, I've got my barn doors on. I wanna make sure and open these up before striking the light, before turning it on, um, so that I don't build up any heat um, inside there. Even though we've converted these to uh, LED, they still do put off a little bit of heat, not as much as their 650 um, predecessor. So I'm gonna take this cable out of here, and ideally, let me rotate this around for you. Uh, I'm gonna take up the, uh, the slack there a little bit and have the switch hang through that rope a little bit so that it's not pulling too much on the back of the instrument. There we go. Uh, we've got power, so I'm gonna rotate this back this direction. Um, when striking the light, whether it is tungsten or LED or whatever it is, you don't wanna shine it into somebody's face, so uh, let's make sure we do that. There is some adjustment to the fixture on the back side here. Uh, it has some spot flood function, so I can spot it in. And what I'm doing there is moving the mirror in the back of the fixture and the fixture, uh, perhaps, so that it spreads out or spots in. Now there are specialty lights that do the spotlight effect, like an ellipsoidal or something like that. Um, this is not one of those instruments, but the lens definitely does help um, create a nice shape for the light. You see how it sort of rolls off on the edges there a little bit as we go through there. Now, if I wanna make some adjustments to the light, whether that be for color temperature or for the quality of the light, I could use some gels 
or diffusion material. First of all, in my opinion, the color temperature of these LED replacement bulbs in the Airy kit are a little bit on the green spike for me. Um, and so what I might use is a, a light magenta colored gel that we call minus green. Uh, here I've got a quarter minus green. Now you might not see it on this particular camera uh, shot, but if we were looking at something on a piece of white or some, uh, or a human, we might see that the color temperature of the light is a little more pleasing if I were using this minus green gel. And I can use a gel in combination with diffusion and other colors, of course. If I wanted to soften up the light, I could use a little bit of diffusion in front of there. I want to make sure, again, even though this is LED, I could still trap some heat in there. So I want to make sure that my light is capable of venting some of that heat. And then I'm going to use clothespins to fix that onto the barn door. If I wanted to add some color temperature gel to that, I could do that as well. Here I have a piece of blue gel if I wanted to cool that off a little bit. The color temperature of these airy LED Fresnels is supposed to be around 5,500 degrees. That's fairly accurate um, and uh, would be close. If I wanted to warm up that light a little bit so that it matched some of the other tungsten fixtures in my scene, I might use some CTO or orange colored gel to warm that up a little bit. If I wanted to change the quantity of this light, I could use a smaller instrument. There are some 300s in the kit. I could use some scrims. Unfortunately, they're not in this kit. I would have to check them out separately. Uh, I could also use a screen or scrim um, in the flag kit, which I'll be showing you shortly. Um, I could also use a dimmer. So these LED lights are dimmable. They don't necessarily go all the way down to zero. Um, so I could check out a dimmer separately uh, and these are good for up to 1k so this this fixture here which is under 100 watts will definitely work and I simply plug that in line and turn the light back on and bring the dimmer up There we go. And you see I can control it down to a certain point. So just like a dimmer you might find in, in grandma's dining room, I can pull that down just a little bit and change the quantity. Now typically when I do this with a tungsten fixture, it changes the color temperature. Um, with this LED one, I'm not quite sure. It might get a little bit greener. And then you see that it doesn't roll off nice and neat at the bottom there. It gets sort of chunky and just sort of, uh, I'm going to turn off. It doesn't have enough power. So um, they don't work as smoothly or as evenly as a tungsten fixture would, um, but that's okay. They do still work with these. This is the 300 uh, Airy, and uh, as you'll see, it doesn't have a cable for the strain relief. So there's nothing to, for me to do about that. Um, it has the same setup as the 650, um, a spring-loaded ear to hold on to the barn doors. They slide into place and then latched in. We can open those up and we can rotate those any direction that we want. So if I open up the doors here and pinch them in for a, just a small little slice of light, Not sure. Also, I can zoom and spot just a little bit, a little bit of wide and spot movement on there. Again, the 300s and 600s, nice small instruments for small locations, or if I'm shooting something, you know, fairly moody and small, um, I don't necessarily need a lot of big lights. 
to fill up that space. Um, the 650s and 300s will do. Will get the job done. Um, and so I can also take a 650 or 300 and punch it into the ceiling or a card or something like that. I don't necessarily have to point it directly at the talent.